As a follow-up from my previous video on CoGrader version 1, let's have a look at version 2 and how it is different and even better than the first version. First things you'll have to do is go to CoGrader, the website. In the top right corner, click on Login and select CoGrader 2.0. Now it says 2.0 there, but as you can see in the top left corner, we are on version 2.34 at the moment and many improvements have been brought to the platform. So let's go ahead, let's set up our classroom, set up the assignment and let's grade some work and save a ton of time grading these assessments and assignments for me. So let's go ahead and create a new class, upload our assignment and then get started. So I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to create this manually. I'm going to call this computing year six. The assignment name will be about Ada Lovelace. So who was Ada Lovelace? And then we are going to add our prompt. I've got my prompt ready here. So the prompt is in this assignment. You'll explore the life and contributions of her. It has to be an essay of about 100 to 500 words, a couple of key points. This is what was shared with the students. Then we can choose the grade. Are we going to set this to elementary, middle school, high school? I'm going to set it to middle school. CoGrader will then automatically generate that rubric. So you can see here, CoGrader will create a rubric automatically unless you select one. I haven't got any selected, so it will automatically generate that. If I was to click on this, I can find rubrics here that have been created by others, or I can create my own by clicking in the top right corner. If I was to click on this, I can create one with AI or I can create it from standards. I'm going to select create with AI, which is the same as not really doing anything else. And then here I want to describe the rubric. So I'm going to just pop that same prompt in there. It's going to use that to generate that, um, that rubric. It's going to use the information and then here it gives me a full breakdown of that rubric. For example, clarity and focus. We have no understanding, limited understanding, basic understanding, thorough understanding. In terms of using facts, definitions and information, we've got no limited, basic and thorough. And again, it's gone through everything and it is going to use this to then grade this assignment. So let's go ahead and save this rubric. I'm going to click on save rubric. It's going to then use that rubric when it's grading the assignments. There we go. We now can select this rubric. There it is, my rubric. Let's select this rubric. And scrolling down, where are your student submissions? You can take these from Google Drive, upload the files, or import a CSV file. I have the actual submission, so I'm going to upload the files. But let's say that you want to just prepare your lessons, get your assignments set up on CoGrader. Then you can click on Create with no submissions and then submit those later when your students have done the work. This is great when you're getting ready for the next half term, the next term, and getting all your assignments prepared and set up. Here I'm going to click on Upload Files and we are going to drop our files in here. Here we go, I've now uploaded my files. You can see we have Emma Johnson, Jack Stevens, Lucas Green, etc. Click on Done. And it's going to create everything I need within CoGrader version 2. As you can see, this little animation shows me that it is currently grading those assignments. You can see it is still grading. We have the student name, which has been automatically pulled in from that file name, which is excellent. This is really helpful. CoGrader version 2 does this really well, whereas in CoGrader version 1, you still had to manually make some changes to the file name. Then it has given me an average grade. Again, this can be tweaked, this can be changed because you, as the teacher, give that final assessment, that final grade, the final feedback. This is simply saving you time so you can go in, you have something to start with, and then you can tweak it. Here we can see 19, 17, 17, 19, 17. Let's have a look and let's go in. This has been graded and needs review, so let's click on it. And you can see here on the left hand side, we have Emma Johnson, who was Ada Lovelace and it's gone through everything. Then on the right hand side, we see the feedback based on the assignment that you can see here on the left. It has also highlighted certain sections. Now, why has it highlighted this? Well, when I hover over it, you can see why. This, for example, clearly presents the contributions. This, again, clear and interesting language that was used. The conclusion at the bottom is well organized. And then we have some credible sources that are cited. 
This shows you where it has taken that information. In the middle, you can see the feedback. It gives you a summary, some glow, grow, and a think about it. You can click on each of these and tweak them, or you can click on the add button and add your own glow, your own grow, your own think about it. This is a great way of really personalizing this feedback for your style, your teaching style, and then going in and tweaking it. Then scrolling down, you will see that it also has this beautiful visual of how it meets the expectations. Again, if you disagree with AI, you can change this, you can scroll it down, or you can select different levels right here, which makes it much easier for you to then customize the feedback. As you can see, scrolling all the way down, we have a number of AI suggestions. We can make this shorter, be stricter, translate it to a different language, or be friendlier. We can make it stricter. Let's go ahead and click on be stricter. I'm going to click on go ahead and do that. AI is now going to regrade this assignment and it's going to be stricter. Going back in, you will see here at the top, that going from an 18.4 out of 20, it has dropped it down to a 16. Because grading these assignments is deeply connected to what you've done in class. You know your students best, you know what they're capable of, and so also you know how to grade this work. As you can see, it is now a lot stricter, it has regraded everything, and it is now 16 out of 20 points. Another thing you can do is you can click on Translate. So when I click on Translate this too, I can select a different language. Let's go with Spanish. We're going to translate the feedback to Spanish, and we're going to apply this to this single assignment. As you could see, we also have an Apply to All. I'm not using that button. I'm not going to regrade every assignment, but this assignment specifically, I'm going to regrade it and also translate. There, we now have our feedback in Spanish, as you can see. This is incredibly powerful. If you have those English as an additional language learners, at times it may be valuable to give the feedback in their dominant language. On the left-hand side, you will also spot that we now have this little button in the top right where it says AI similarity 99%. Take this with a grain of salt. This is an AI plagiarism checker. It is not foolproof. As with all AI plagiarism checkers, you know your students best. But if you had a feeling that their writing style is significantly different from everything else they produce in class, then you could look at this. For more on AI plagiarism checkers, I will leave a link in the description below to an article written by a friend of mine how AI plagiarism checkers have value. However, there are a lot of false positives. And this is here mentioned by CoGrader as well. Think of AI similarity as a one of several tools. Again, it is not foolproof. Don't just mark them down when the plagiarism checker says 90% similarity. We are going to go on to the next one. So I'm going to approve this one. We're on to the next submission. Here we are on the next one. We're going to approve, next one, approve, and the next one, approve. There we go. We are now approving all these submissions. Once everything has been approved, we are back to that main page of our submissions. Here you can see at the top was my actual um, prompt, my description of this assignment. At the bottom, all the submissions with the work, and then in addition to this, we can now go to the analytics. So in the top right corner, as you can see here, I have an analytics button. I'm going to click on analytics. It's going to generate overall analytics for what's happened in this assignment, what my students have produced, and it gives me a beautiful snapshot of what I can work on as a teacher. So here you can see overall class assessments, students are performing well, they are using specific and interesting language. What are some of their strengths? What are some of their areas for growth and what should I be planning for next? So here you can see they need to work on including information from at least two credible sources. Five out of six students were struggling with that. So that tells me we need to revisit this. You can also see that they are struggling with APA format. Six out of six students struggled with that and the flow four out of six students. This is incredibly helpful for you as a teacher to then plan your next lessons. And then one added bonus is as you scroll down, you'll see the averages and median 
of how they've performed, you will also have this beautiful breakdown of how the rubric has been marked. So here you can see clarity, focus, development, organization is a beautiful spiderweb chart that will show you how your students have performed. So overall version 2.0, a huge improvement over the first version. And if you are a subscriber to CoGrader version one, then you also have access to version two. So go ahead and log into version two. If you haven't tried it out yet, click on that link in the description. You can try out CoGrader today. You get a free trial with 350 gradings. That's part of your 14 day trial. And after that, you can decide if this is the right product for you. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.